All right, last time in chapter three we, three, we learned about how the molasses was used to make bombs. They boiled it down to a type of alcohol that was put in dynamite and bombs. Pretty crazy. But now we left Tony and Carmen at the tank and they heard a growling sound. What do you think it is? Chapter four, the growling noise got louder. Grrr, go, 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 grrr, go, go, go. Is it dogs? Tony asked nervously. He looked around, eyes wide. Carmen's stomach tightened. The North End was infested with vicious stray dogs that roamed in packs. They howled in alleys at night, and many of them had rabies. If you got bitten, you'd die a grisly death if you didn't get rabies shot stabbed right into your stomach. The sound got even louder. The ground around the tank shook. Carmen's heart pounded. Could it be an earthquake? She didn't think they had those in Boston, but what did she know? She whirled around, ready to grab Tony and Bolt. She imagined the North End crumbling apart like her village back in Italy. But the men working along the waterfront seemed to be doing what they always did. They were rolling their barrels and lugging their crates, talking and laughing. Look, Tony cried. Carmen followed Tony's gaze to the tank. The metal in front of them was vi vibrating as if it was breathing. Is something in there? Carmen thought. Her heart skipped a beat. What if it's a... But just as quickly the noise... Just as quickly as the noise started, it stopped. The tank went still. Carmen and Tony were so focused on the tank, they didn't hear the footsteps creeping up behind them. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Boomed a voice. Carmen practically jumped out of her skin. She and Tony slowly turned around. A big-bellied man with greasy black beard and small, mean eyes stood over them. He was holding a huge club, and he looked like he was ready to crack some skulls. You're not allowed to be here, he growled. This is private property. Carmen realized he must work for the company that owned the tank. Sorry, Carmen said, her voice shaking. We were just... We, we heard noises coming from the tank. The man shook his head and rolled his eyes like she and Tony were scared little babies. So what, he said, it's always doing that. Molasses makes noise, it boils up sometimes. He raised his club. Now get out of here before I give you something to cry about. Carmen and Tony took off. The stable was only a couple hundred yards away. They stopped to catch their breath behind a shed. Their eyes met and they burst out laughing. I thought there was a monster inside that tank, Tony cried. He made a face and turned his sticky hands into claws. Rawr, he said, I'm the molasses monster. Slime shoots out of my eyes. Or maybe it was a shark, Tony said, turning his claws into a fin. It sneaked into the molasses ship and then wriggled through the pipes into the tank. Carmen smiled. Tony really was smart. It was true that the molasses came to Boston on big ships. The ships traveled from Cuba and Puerto Rico, islands in the Caribbean. The molasses was pumped from the ships into the tank through a giant pipe. Carmen caught her breath and brushed some dirt from her coat. She didn't admit to Tony that she really thought, what she'd really thought when she heard those noises, that a person was trapped inside. What if a worker had fallen in when, and was drowning, being smothered by the disgusting, bitter goo? Just the idea made her heart pound with horror. But now she looked at Tony's grinning face and laughed. Wait until Papa heard about this. Carmen and Tony burst through the squeaking stable door. Instantly, Carmen felt calmer as she breathed in the smell of hay and horses and heard the loud snicker of hello from Rosie. The mare was the only horse still at the stable at this time of day. The others were out pulling wagons back and forth across Boston. Rosie was too old to work anymore, but Mr. Vita loved her too much to sell her. Rosie poked her white head out the door of her stall, flicking her ears and snorting softly. Carmen gave her a kiss on the nose. Tony rubbed her head. He loved her too. Rosie stuck out her long pink tongue and started licking Tony's fingers. Tony laughed. I think you like molasses even more than I do, he said to Rosie. Papa, Carmen called, we're here. Carmen expected to hear Papa's cheerful voice. He usually came running out from the back to wrap her and Tony in a big hug. But it wasn't Papa who appeared. Or Mr. Vita. It was Tony's mother, Mrs. Grosso. What was Mrs. Grosso doing here at the stable? Who was watching Tony's little sisters and his little brother Frankie? 
and then Carmen noticed the worried look on Mrs. Grosso's face. More than worried, Mrs. Grosso looked scared. A stab of fear slashed through Carmen's chest. Had something happened to Tony's father? Had Frankie broken his arm again? Did one of the little girls get bitten by a rat? But wait, why was Mrs. Grosso looking at Carmen? Why did she have tears in her eyes? Carmen, Mia, Cara, my dear. She took Carmen's hands. I'm so sorry, but your papa is sick. Oh, no. Why is everything about sickness? What do you think? What's going to happen with her papa? Oh, we'll see you next time. Maybe. We'll see.